Hi all, I hope that all of you are keeping well. Um, today I wanted to think about the second verse in Psalms 131. We talked about the background of the Psalms in the last session. Um, let's jump straight into the verse. I don't want to delay it any longer. It's a beautiful verse. I love this verse. David talks about in this particular verse how he has quietened his soul, quietened his mind. And like a weaned child with its mother. And how like a weaned child he is content. There are some two, three concepts I want to talk about in this particular verse. The first one is, David says, I have. It means that David has quietened his soul. Many times we are unable to do it. We cannot quieten our souls. We're so busy. We're busy bodies. You know, we, we want to do that. We want to do this. We want to look at the WhatsApp messages. We engage in phone calls. We have got a hundred calls. We think that we are the center of the universe. We think that our world revolves because of us. We think um, that the entire universe works because of us. No, that's not true. Um, when I used to work with, um, you know, some of, the, some of the older companies that I used to work with, um, I don't know how many of you remember, there's this brand called Blackberry. So they've reinvented themselves. But the old Blackberries were the ultimate sign of um, corporate uh, refinement. You know, you need to have a Blackberry. And, uh, and if you've got a Blackberry, you've, you've made it. You've become somebody. You, you, you are somebody to be reckoned with. And that's what, that's what, that's what it was all about. And um, I, I think it grew up and I used to go to some malls or, you know, when we, as a family, we used to go out. I used to carry my black, blackberry in a, you know, in, in one of those, um, you know, side pouches. Uh, you know, people used to see me walk around with a blackberry. I used to take it out quicker. Uh, it reminds me of, you know, old westerns, you know, where cowboys bring out their guns, you know, very fast. In the same way, you know, you're, you know in, in the corporate world, you bring out your blackberry fast and you shoot off a couple of emails. Um, that, that, that was the ultimate status. Um, <laughs> corporate status, I guess. You know, at that time, I used to think that, you know, that the, that the company used to run because of me. And, um, you know, I realized, no, it's not. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't. I mean, your life runs, pro probably the only thing that runs is, is your life. Um, you know, your, you know, your life impacts a few people. You know, it, it does impact a few people, make no mistake. You know, it influences and impacts people. But how it impacts and how it um, influences people is determined by you. Um, what is the kind of level of influence and value that you're adding depends on you. Right? And that is what we want to talk about here today. Because sometimes when you're so filled with pride, in the last session we thought about being proud. Pride is where you think that you matter. That you are somebody better. When you start looking down on people. David used this particular, you know, in, in his words, in, he uses these words in, in the first word where he says, my eyes are not arrogant. Another translation says, my eyes are not lofty. It means, you know, my eyes are not in a position of, you know, where I can look down upon people. No. Because if, if that is from where you are operating your daily life, trust me, you've got it all wrong. You're not making much of an impact or you're not making much of a, um, you know, influence in anybody's life. But where do you find true humility from? You find true humility when you are with God. And that's what David says in this verse too. David is finding his humility. David is finding his pace in life when he's with God. And this brings us to the next point of this particular verse. David says, my, I, you know, I quieten my soul. 
it is like a weaned child. So what's the difference between a weaned child and a nursing child? A nursing child is demanding. Venom, venom, venom. Right? It's demanding. It's cranky. It's crying. It gets upset. You know, the, the, the nursing attitude, it really needs... Over a period of time, you know, I, I don't think it kind of leaves us fully as human beings. When you grow, you know, you get to see that your kids, you know, they get cranky if they don't get food at the right time. They are hungry, they get cranky. You know, same thing happens when you grow up. You grow up, you know, you, uh, you miss out your lunch. You know, you get cranky. And it shows. And you take that into your spiritual life. You know, if you're, spiritual, uh, if you're spiritually hungry, you're cranky all the time. You know, it, it's all about, no, I want it, I want it, God, I need it, I need it. If I don't have it, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, jump off, I'm going to throw myself off. I'm, I'm, you know, that, that is uh, spiritual maturity. The spiritual maturity is where, where David says that, is, that he's able to quieten his soul. He's able, if, if David was able to quieten his soul, it, it also means that David learned how to do it. Apostle Paul says in Philippians chapter 4, he says, I have learned to live. I have learned to face all kinds of situations. I have learned to live in plenty and in lack, but in all things, giving glory to God. So it's about learning. It's about learning how do you manage, how do you quieten your heart, and today I believe that that is something which all believers need. We need to learn how to quieten our, our spirits. And in our spirits, as we quieten ourselves, we need to take the right decisions in our thinking. And these thinking and the right thinking leads us to right behaviors. Hallelujah. So when a wean child who is full, who is to some extent independent, they are much more independent. You know, they, they, they don't look at the mother, you know, for, as, as the primary provider for milk. They also want the companionship. They also want the love. They also want to help. They want to care for the, for the mother. They understand the heart of the mother and they try to do it. They look at the mother, they begin to learn what the mother is doing and then they try to, they try to implement it, they try to do it. And that's what God is saying. Through David, in that Psalms, that today we need to understand the way and the will of God. To understand this heartbeat and to carry the emotions of God and do it, execute it, to try and do it. Isn't that what Jesus did? Isn't that what Jesus is asking us to do in the New Testament? Our job is to bring heaven down. Jesus said, freely you receive, freely give. We are called to do what the Father wants us to do. We are called to do what the Father has done, what the Son has done, what Jesus Christ has done, what the Holy Spirit wants to do through our lives, to make an impact all around us, to change the world, to go to the ends of the world, to go to nations. Don't limit yourself. Listen to the heartbeat of God and believe. Find your rest in God. And from that rest, if you begin to operate, every, you will begin to see that all things will come together. For every good work that has been put in place already, ordained, designed, destined for you in your life, it will all come together. So, whatever promises God has given to you, it's not lost. It's coming. The best days of your life are ahead. I know it's a cliche. I know it's been you know, stated many times, but it's the truth. The best days of your life are ahead of you in Christ. And with that, I want to thank you. 
all for listening to me. Let's have a quick word of prayer. To close your eyes. I want to pray for you. Father, I pray for everybody who is listening to my voice. I pray that each of them would find rest in you. Supernatural peace. Pray that you would bless them in the season. That you would open ways and provisions for them. That you would shut down every single thing that you do not want in their lives. Father, that you would bless them abundantly. Abundantly, so abundantly, Father, that it would meet their needs and that they would be able to give to others. Father God, to do good works that you have prescribed, that you have set in place, that you have ordained your strategy for their lives. Once again, I surrender everything. I want to thank you. You know, we, we want to just bless you and, 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 and praise you. Thank you, Lord, for your love for finding us when we were lost. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you all for listening to me. I look forward to next week.